Welcome to Warhammer Warscore Review. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Thunderscorn unit, the Dragon Ogors. Warscore Review. Continuing the Beast of Chaos reviews, next up are the Dragon Ogors. Part of the Thunderscorn subfaction, these guys are pretty awesome looking, but let's see their uses on the tabletop. Starting out strong with an 8 inch movement, making them not super fast, but still more maneuverable than most models. 5 wounds and a 4 up save makes them comparable to monstrous cavalry. They're resilient to damage, but they have a pretty below average bravery of 6, so we're going to have to find some ways to mitigate battle shock tests. Next up is their melee weapons, and they actually have a few options here. They all have their raking 4 claws, but they have the ability to choose one of three other weapons. First up are the paired ancient weapons. Six attacks, hitting and wounding on threes. Would be nice for chopping up some infantry, but that's about it. Next on the list is the Draconic Warglaive, sacrificing two attacks compared to the paired weapons for an extra rend and inch on the range. The final weapon option is the Draconic Crusher. This one has just three attacks, but damage three. Otherwise identical to the paired weapons. I generally recommend the Warglaive, as the rend and reach will both come in handy with these big bases. As mentioned, they each have their raking four claws, which give them an extra two lukewarm attacks. The Dragonogors come with a special ability that will help their offensive potential. Storm Rage allows them to reroll hit rolls of one if they are wholly within 12 inches of a Dragonogor Shagoth. So that's it. These models are pretty basic other than their weapon choices. They come in units of 3 for 140 points, and go up to units of 12. They are even battle line if the general is the Dragon Ogre Shagoth in a Beast of Chaos army. As a battle line choice, they won't let you down. They are both durable and can dish out the pain. Send them after harassing units, or go peel mid-sized units off far objectives. They are decently fast, so they won't have too much trouble getting there. If they are your battle line choice, they can go in minimum sized units, but if you're taking these models to deal damage, take them in units of 6 or more. Of course with the new Beast of Chaos Battle Tome, I was eager to note what sort of synergies there now were for these previously unsupported models. The Beast of Chaos Battle trait, Creatures of the Storm, is the Thunderscorn's unique ability. This one gives them a free d6 inch movement in the hero phase that can't start or end within 3 inches of the enemy models. So basically note that these guys are effectively always moving at least 9 inches, but as much as 14 without running. Now they're actually super fast, but somewhat unreliably so. The Beast of Chaos summoning will be pumping out a unit of 3 Dragon Ogors around turn 2 or 3 from the Herdstone, so keep that in mind. And while we're on the topic of the Herdstone, it would be good to mention that it would protect the unit from battle shock tests. A large unit might have trouble fitting completely within 6 inches, but each battle round increases the range. Moving right along, the Beast of Chaos command trait, Father of the Storm, would allow the player to reroll the Creatures of the Storm roll in the hero phase. Being able to re-roll means you'll reliably be moving these models more than 10 inches, making them even faster. Keeping with the speed theme, there is also a pretty nice Thunderscorn magic item. Horn of the Tempest grants the bear an 18 inch wholly within aura. Models within can run and charge. Man, so now Dragon Ogres are going 8 plus 2d6 inches. With everything mentioned before, and the at the double command ability, our draconic centaurs could easily be moving 18 inches and still charge. The great phrase are also pretty important to choosing your army. The all herd would offer defense from battle shock tests, subtracting one from the roll if they fought in combat in the same turn. The all herd also benefit from a specific command trait. Dominator allows the model to reroll charge rolls when the general is within 3 inches of the enemy, so charge in your general first to ensure the Dragon Ogors get in. Dark Walkers is an interesting great fray, 
This one would give Thunderscorn models the ambush rule Brayherds receive, meaning they can be deployed in your first movement phase, 6 inches from the board edge, and more than 9 inches from an enemy. Dragon Ogors are probably fast enough that this really doesn't help them as much, and is actually easier to defend against. On the other hand, this can protect a large unit from being targeted first turn by an enemy's Alpha Strike. The final great fray are the Gave Spawn. Their unique command ability would allow Chaos Spawns of all things to give out an aura ability granting plus one attack. Using this once or twice will really up the combat potential for these models. Beasts of Chaos spells are up next. And first, we'll start with the only applicable Brayherd spells, Tendrils of Atrophy and Wild Rampage. Tendrils of Atrophy would effectively increase the rend of attacks against a certain unit. This is great for all sorts of targets, but it would also pair well with the Herdstone, which grants the same effect in a small bubble, making their weapons rend 2 or even 3 if you chose the Warglaive. Subtracting 3 from the opponent's save roll all but guarantees damage. Wild Rampage is the next spell, and would offer reroll to wound rolls with the Dragon Ogors at the expense of being minus one to save. If I were only taking one, I'd probably go for the Tendrils. It's great that some of the Brayherd spells help out the Dragon Ogors, but surprisingly, Thunderscorn now have their own lore. One of their spells, Sundering Blades, has a similar effect to Tendrils of Atrophy. This spell would increase the Ren characteristic by one. Whew. It's a lot of things to eliminate the enemy save. Speaking of Thunderscorn spells, the Dragon Ogor Shagoth has a unique spell that would also help out the Dragon Ogors. Summon Lightning allows them to heal D3 wounds and reroll wound rolls. Having the Shagoth already gives them reroll ones to hit. Now it gives them reroll wounds too. The Shagoth also has another ability that would heal the model's D3 wounds in the case of a tie when rolling for initiative. Kind of unlikely, but bound to happen every so often, just maybe not when you really need it. Not only the Shagoth, but the Thunderscorn Stormherd War Scroll Battalion has the same effect. Include at least one Dragon Ogre Shagoth, and at least three units of Dragon Ogres, and they would heal in the Hero Phase. On the roll of a 4-up, they heal a wound. After that, on another 4-up, an enemy unit within one inch of the Thunderscorn takes a mortal wound. This battalion is okay but is super expensive for a pretty mild effect. The Beast of Chaos Battle Tome comes with four very interesting War Scroll Battalions as well. They each grant a relatively mild effect, but also give them a mark of a Chaos God. We'll be here all night if I tried to name every combination possible through this, but I see these battalions being used in their respective Chaos God army, like Blades of Corn or Maggot King of Nurgle. This would see our Dragon Ogres paired with units like Bloodstokers, Bloodsecrators, and Epidemius, all of which would have a huge effect on our Centaurs. Who would also have a huge effect on the Dragon Ogres is a Chaos Sorcerer Lord. The character can ally into a Beast of Chaos army and could be using its spell to allow them to reroll to hit, wound, and save rolls. The Sorcerer even has another ability to grant another unit reroll save rolls of one. Making the Centaurs more durable is always welcome, even when they are at minimum unit size. So getting the most out of the Dragon Ogre unit revolves around making them fast and hit hard. In Abyssa Chaos Army, stick the Dragon Ogres in the Gave Spawn Great Fray. Paired with a Chaos Spawn and a couple Dragon Ogre Shagoth spells, three regular Dragon Ogres will be putting out 15 Ren 2 attacks and 6 Ren 1 attacks, that reroll all wound rolls as well as hit rolls of one. Put the target near the Herdstone or under the influence of the Brayherd spell, Tendrils of Atrophy, and those attacks are wiping out most armor saves with all their attacks. Add in a Battalion War Scroll so you can still include the Horn of the Tempest to keep those Dragon Ogors running and charging. Now I'm sure you can make some insane corn Dragon Ogor units using an assortment of things with blood in their name but I'm not going to go into all of it. Just start with a Bloodstoker and Bloodsecrator, and you're already good. In all, the Dragon Ogres are fairly universal. Beasts, Chaos Gods, 
and even Grand Alliance all welcome Dragon Ogors, because they are included in so many synergies. Dragon Ogors receive a 4 out of 5. They are a solid choice and fill multiple roles, and can still pack a huge punch with a couple buffs. What do you think of Dragon Ogors? What War Scrolls would you like to see reviewed next on the channel? Leave your answers, suggestions, and questions in the comments below, and thanks for watching.